air traffic control vulnerabilities with ATSB and RenderMan, plus more from DerbyCon 2013 in this segment of Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by the Air Force Collaboratory. So what got you into ADSB hacking? I mean, it's like another complex system. Did it start at ADSB or did you start with like air traffic control to begin with? Well, it started out that I bought an app and you know, you look through the camera uh, on your phone, it overlays a flight information. Like, oh, where does this information come from? It's kind of cool. That's uh, based off of ADSB. Uh, automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, which is a whole bunch of ground stations run by volunteers that upload this information and share and you know, generate nice maps and everything. Why is it that it's uploaded by volunteers? Uh, it's not like public info? Uh, it's public info. The FAA does provide a feed, but it's delayed and scrubbed and that. This is the, the raw information right out of This is the kind of stuff that you'd see on like FlightAware. Yeah, it's uh, FlightAware and other sites like that tend to use, they actually use the uh, FAA feed because it's got the arrival times and everything like that. But the uh, ADSB stuff is just you're, you're plucking the raw data, the same that uh, air traffic control would be using. And I started looking into this thinking, hey, that's kind of cool. But the problem is it's unencrypted and unauthenticated. So there, anybody can read this stuff. And, you know, for a hacker hearing unencrypted and unauthenticated on something like, you know, an airliner is like, oh, dear God, what now? <laughs> so so uh, to kind of like give the 30,000-foot the overview, if you will, um, as opposed to traditional means of like seeing where airplanes are based on radar and simply you know, getting on the, the radio and communicating with ground stations, um, how does ADSB differ and how did we come to have this? Uh, ADSB is part of a, a larger system called NextGen, uh, which is the Next Generation Air Traffic Control. Uh, they're trying to modernize the system and, uh, you know, try to do more with less because, you know, we're trying to get more, more and more people are flying. Uh, basically, the plane has GPS now and is reporting its position to air traffic control rather than air traffic control hitting, you know, bouncing a, a signal off the, the plane. So it's a, a lot more exact and uh, a lot higher update. So you're able to pack flights in because you have a better assurance of where they actually are. So, so rather than just depending on, say, like a, a spinning radio, a radar dome to actually say, hey, we've got big metal object in the sky, it must be an airplane, and that guy left at this time, and he's radioing, saying he's there, so it's yeah. probably there's him. Also, well, there's also a transponder system. Oh, and then there's old transponder yeah, systems, right. Read and reply back with, like, flight number and stuff like that. So, so how is this any worse than that if it's providing more information in a... In a uh, faster update interval. Well, with the radar, you were actually bouncing a signal off metal. You could verify, yes, there is actually something there. Um, with the transponder, it was really uh, quite difficult to, to forge. I mean, you'd actually have to put something in, be queried by the, uh, um, by the secondary radar. The, with ADSB, because it's broadcast, it's just broadcasting every direction to every one. It's, there's no uh, querying or, or challenge response or anything with that. So it's able to uh, be uh, intercepted easily and... Uh, well, I mean, everything should be able to be intercepted and, and no security protocol or anything should rely on the fact that it can't be intercepted. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with sniffing, but I imagine that this is what... Is this like TCP of the sky? Is, it, is there actually a network protocol where there's... It's, it's, <laughs> really? Uh, it's, it's omnidirectional. There's no contention protocol. It's just there's blast. no association with a ground station before sending a payload. No, it's just odd, constantly just sitting there beaconing like a, a Wi-Fi access point, just saying I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Um, once a second uh, to anybody that wants to listen. Well, if somebody else is doing it on the same once a second, then they're just talking over each other. If there is actually problems where if you get pack the flights in too close together, uh, they end up talking over each other and just squashing each other and just. Uh, interfering with crazy because there's no actual contention protocol built into this thing. Wow, who, when did this protocol, who, okay, I can't imagine such a, uh, I mean, it seems obvious, like if you're trying to fix the problem of being able to pack more planes into a runway uh, of using technology like this, but the whole concept of not putting in parts of the protocol where, I don't know, there's actually a clear to speak, if you will, or, or a CTR, yeah. clear to send, uh, like you would have in, say, you know, traditional uh, radio-based uh, networks. I don't know, where, how long ago did this come about? And uh, The initial protocol was developed uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, but 
they had to work off of existing radios, existing equipment. So it's the same kind of modest data link that was there previously. They just you know jam more information into it because they didn't want you know the the industry is terrified of mass obsolescence. You know they don't want to have to replace half the avionics in the the plane. So if they could reuse the radios and just you know send some slightly different information over them, you know they really like that idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like the de- this was not an overnight deployment, I take it. No, their their modernization is over twenty years. Wow! So this really makes SCADA look yeah. up to date. Yeah, it's the same idea where you've got something that is is developed and is already, you know, pretty much obsolete or, or made redundant by other better ideas. But because you're having to change out literally the you know this this massive network, every plane, every you know air traffic control station. It's just this humongous system that nobody, I don't really think anyone understands it completely. Well, it's a, it is a massive hub and spoke network and the packets are people. Yeah, pretty much. You know, your MTU is how many people can you pack in a A380? Yeah, and the problem is that when you've got uh, limited bandwidth to get people through because you've got, you know, 20 miles between flights because, you know, that's the, the most you can actually pack them in and uh, you've got more and more people wanting to do more and more flights, you know, suddenly now prices start skyrocketing on things. You know, it's this weird game. It's supply and demand, supply and, and demand. so so technology can hopefully. If you've got, if you can get the pl- uh, the flights packed in tighter, then you can get more throughput yeah, from. Yeah. And you don't have to build extra runways or. You know. Yeah, that would be like adding more bandwidth, yeah. building more runways, but that's not as easy as getting them in closer. Okay, so we we condense our packets, we get them closer, uh, and we use technology to save us. But I mean, obviously, as security researchers, we see a complex system. We see some inherent vulnerabilities like unauthenticated, unencrypted, no, you know, n- nothing of that sort. Uh, I take it you just see this and then you call up the ICAO or whatever the regulatory body is and say, hey, I found a vulnerability in your system, right? Yeah, problem is most of the time th- those phone numbers don't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, you phone up ICAO, it's, you know, like who the hell do you talk to? Do you talk to the media person? They're gonna say, no, 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 there's no, no problems. Um, hey, you talk to the engineers. Yeah, that's the problem is I mean, getting through to the engineers body, um, but, the pro- but the problem is it's all done by committee you know that you've got you know all the the uh, airline manufacturers all the all the plane manufacturers all the various uh, you've got uh, you know each country has their own regulatory body for uh, flight control and having to get everybody to play nice together in the first place is you know damn near impossible well it's, it is to be honest it is like the one of the first true global networks I mean you look at like it's telegraphs, you know, transatlantic telegraphs, you look at transatlantic flights, those were some of the first, and the internet is really just like that on like hyperspeed. Yeah, it's, I always still argue it's one of the most complex systems out there. Um, internet probably is uh, the biggest, but, you know, air traffic control, the fact that we're able to fly halfway around the globe, you know, in, in a day is amazing Well, to because me. it depends on competent, well, I mean, okay, so there's problems with the protocol, we're not going to lie, ADSB has you know, uh, some inherent flaws. But ultimately, aren't we still relying on a man in an air traffic control tower that unfortunately is not being paid enough and has unfortunately worked too many hours, and also a man in the cockpit who, again, is not paid and overworked. But still, we're talking about, you know, people here. The the people still have the final say, but the problem is with technology, in order to uh, do more with less, we're relying more on the technology to, to accomplish certain things. So it's a case of garbage in, garbage out. If Because it's unencrypted and unauthenticated, if I'm able to inject or, or influence that data, decisions made by those humans are going to be done um, incorrectly. You know, they're, they're going to make decisions thinking, oh crap, there's you know, a plane just below me that's going to hit me. I'm going to you know, pull up and suddenly now your stewardesses are on the ceiling. Yeah. Um, that's no good. No, nobody, nobody likes no, nobody stewardesses likes on the ceiling. Drinks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or actually, I mean, even to like fast forward and, and totally, you know, think like 20 years in the future when, you know, you look at drone technology now where we've got like predators and things of that nature and even on like the, the hacker side with even just Arduino flight control stuff, 20 years in the future, maybe FedEx or UPS or DHL is going to be asking the question, why do we have men in the cockpit, you know? that you're going to start seeing more and more of this dependence on technology that may not necessarily be ready or, or for, you know, this being its prime time. That, you know, like I said, with, with this particular protocol, because it's unencrypted, unauthenticated, 
what can I inject into the system? Can, you know, they're already doing tests with drones using ADS-B because if they're having to fly in commercial airspace. Could you test? Could you just start injecting stuff? And I mean, it's just over radio. You figure out the modulation and you oh, send yeah, it over that frequency. Got capability. Oh, okay. Built, uh, you know, using what would happen if you did that? If you uh, just started that would violate uh, a huge number of laws dealing with uh, interference of uh, uh, tra uh, traffic signaling devices. I mean, doesn't it? So you know, violate some laws when you send out, you know, fall, like uh, when you do MAC address spoofing over Wi-Fi? It is, but this it's is a little bit different. But we're also talking about, you know, airliners with people and lives here. You know, it's, it's a lot of metal and, uh, and lives involved. And frankly, everybody's so bloody concerned about air travel, safety, and everything like that. They tend to come, you know, shoot first, ask questions later situation. So sure. um, that so, said... So for that... For that reason, it can't be pen tested because. Well, that said, there, there, I wouldn't necessarily pen test on you know a live system as it were, but that's there's got to be like test labs out there for for proving this stuff, for verifying that you know equipment works. You know, there's got to be a way that we could you know, and I, I keep challenging the FAA. I want to be wrong on this stuff. I want it you know all. Well, did, have you gone to the FAA? Have you uh, gone to ICAO or or any of the other organizations? Uh, any of the media I've gotten where the, the uh, reporters then goes you know, to the press contact, but I always get a statement back saying, no, 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 it's safe, it's safe. Well, how is it safe? We can't tell you. It's classified. Mm. Like, okay, well, meet me halfway. Put me up in one of these test labs. Let's, let's test this, see what Imagine happens. It's like Wi-Fi was classified. Like, trust us, it's cool. WEP yeah. works. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing is that we're, we're dealing with a situation where Actually, my ass... Actually, it's WEP. Yeah. I mean, my butt is in those seats. I'm flying. I need to know what the heck is, you know, keeping me safe. Sure. If it's not safe, I'd like to be help, you know, help fix it. Because, you know, obviously I want to be able to continue flying and, and know it's safe. Um, if they're certain that it's secure and safe, then, well, what's the harm in letting me? You know, it's, it's additional yeah. assurance. You know, they prove... Well, if I you're not them, pen testing it, who is? That's the trick, is that who, the FAA has said, well, we've never you know, in, you know, detected a ghost flight you know, in our system. It's like, okay, does that mean that no one's ever tested? Or that you just haven't detected one? Mm. You know, that's a, not a comforting statement. So I get that it would probably be totally not legal to start sending out ADSB packets. However, sniffing these up, it seems like there's a whole network of amateurs. Yeah. What is... The, what is um, what is the vulnerability there? Just the fact that you have access to the raw data and you can't filter you know, what people have access to. You can't say, well, these flights are sensitive, let's not put those there. Kind of thing. Well, but give me an the, example. The, well, the, the data mining potential. That if you can watch uh, you know, some of the, the, the corporate private jets, you know, where they take, if you've got a, uh, you know, the, the corporate jet flying into the head office city of their competition, and you know that they've got some, you know, financial issues. Gee, I wonder if they're about to be bought out. Mm. You know, that sort of stuff. Uh, being able to track, uh, um, you know, pop stars and stuff like that. And, you know, if you know they're on that flight, you can see uh, where they're going and stuff like that. You know, if they suddenly go off to, you know, where there's a uh, some, like, uh, uh, addiction clinic or something right, right. like that. But it's not like the, the president's flying around Air Force One with an ADSB transponder saying no. Air Force One. Visit the Air Force Collaboratory at airforce.com slash collaboratory. Work with real airmen to solve some of the Air Force's toughest science and technology challenges. Your idea could change everything. This week's Technoless Photo of the Week comes from Ross. Now this one was Darren's personal favorite of the week. He said, hi Darren, I'm a big fan of your show. One of my favorite shows was season nine, episode 903, where you built a computer case out of a photo frame. Ever since that episode, I was motivated to build my own computer case. So here's one of my projects that I'm most proud of. Darren, is this, it almost looks like a trash can. It, and it kind of looks like one of those things that you put fish into. My blue it's a bucket! <laughs> Have you seen my bucket? <laughs> I love that. That is so cool. And it's, it's very original. You can send your pictures over to feedback at hack5.org. Have you built a computer in a bucket? I want to see yours as well. And make sure to put the subject line as technolust so, so that we're easily able to find it.